Steve Bellamy also will be dropping by from the Tennis Channel. And Sal Powell gets us set for T.O.'s return to the Eagles tonight with Donovan McNabb. It's all coming your way. The final Grand Slam event of the year starts on Monday in Flushing Meadows with the U.S. Open. We're pleased to welcome in Steve Bellamy, the uh, president and founder of the Tennis Channel, who joins us. Uh, how are you today, Steve? Great. How are you doing? Doing very well. It's going to be an exciting time right now for tennis fans. Of course, in the men's draw, there's Roger Federer and everyone else. Uh, is this a good or a bad thing to have one player dominate the game the way he is right now? Well, I think tennis is really fortunate that we have what is, in my opinion, one of the greatest athletes in the history of the sport playing. And uh, what tends to happen whenever you have one guy dominate for a while, everybody focuses their practice routines on beating that particular guy, so it becomes tougher for him to dominate. And this year, in Roger's quarter, he has David Nelbandian, who is the one guy who's been very successful at uh, taking him out. He's got a 5-2 and two record against Roger. Uh, you called him one of the most dominating athletes in the sport uh, in the history of tennis. Now, 82 straight weeks as the world's number one player definitely uh, holds true to what you're saying. But how do you explain the success of Roger Federer? I, uh, I think he's literally one of the greatest athletes of all time. If you break down an athlete by all the different disciplines, strength, speed, uh, agility, court sense, this guy has it all. He's the best in every single department just about or one of the top couple. You put it together and you got a Roger Federer. How do you think he'll be uh, received by the American fans at the U.S. Open as he comes in as the defending champ, but clearly he'll be matched up sometimes, you imagine, against Americans? Yeah, I think... Uh, he has become almost ubiquitous uh, in, in pop culture, much like uh, tennis history, you know, Guillermo Vilas, Bjorn Borg, Martina Navratilova. It takes a little longer for them to gestate, but then they become, uh, in, you know, there's no boundaries of, of country. Uh, as far as the Americans uh, involved, describe the atmosphere we'll see on center court when an Andy Roddick or an Andre Agassi are in a match. Um, certainly, you know, we're, we're pro-American. The Americans love it when, uh, when their boys take the court. The Andy Roddick one's going to be a real neat uh, quarter in the third quarter because you've got Robbie Ginepri, another great American who's playing fantastic tennis, uh, meeting Andy in the second round. And uh, Robbie just beat him in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago, so that'll be a great match. Uh, Steve, Andy Roddick obviously has a very solid resume, but majors have been a problem for him. What does he need to do as far as adjustments to make sure he can get back on the top level at the game? Well, I think that, you know, his Achilles heel has been Roger Federer, and it's just it's unfortunate for him that such a talent is playing at the same time as he is. But I think if you took a page uh, out of Nadal and out of Nelbandian's book, they keep Roger out on the court a lot longer, and they're the only two guys who have really been successful about, with him. So I think Andy ought to uh, keep the ball and play a lot longer, kind of get a little less out of the first strike offense and uh, make this guy hit 30, 40 shots a point. Do you look at the young Spaniard, Rafael Nadal, as the next Roger Federer? Um, I think, uh, you know, tennis is interesting because we've got all these different court surfaces. Uh, he is the game's greatest player on clay, no doubt. He's probably the best retriever we've ever had in the sport. Um, but I, I don't think he quite gets to the, the Federer level uh, on all the surfaces. Uh, what do you think adjustments as far as uh, Nadal is concerned that he'll need to make to compete both on a hard court and in the U.S.? Um, I, I would bet you anything that he is really focusing all of his energy now on doing better on hard courts and grass. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, he's, his DNA is, is wired like that of a big top spinner, so it will be tougher. Um, but I think he's got to have a little more penetrating balls, a little less uh, loopy balls. Uh, Steve, in the women's draw, you have Maria Sharapova. She's the number one seed. What shape is her game in right now? Uh, she certainly is striking the ball extremely clean. Uh, in her quarter, she's got uh, Danila Du first round, which you know, could be challenging, but I think she gets through that. And then uh, a young player from Czechoslovakia who's amazing named Nicole Vadasova. Um, but I think she's still uh, she's a good contender to get to the finals of the semis and could easily win the tournament. Any explanation? You have four Russians uh, ranked or seated in the top ten uh, going into this tournament. Any explanation for that? Um, you know, I would blame it all on Anna Kornikova. I mean, she's, <laughs> she kind of came out of the box and became this giant superstar, and it, and it showed uh, girls over there that, wow, you know, you can, you can really succeed in something. And now you've just had a bunch of, uh, I'm not going to say they're followers, but uh, she certainly was a trendsetter in that. And Sharapova, like Kornikova, to some degree has become the face of the sport, also for her talent, not just for her look. Uh, do you think she can handle that type of pressure, or how does she handle that type of pressure? I, I think uh, she has been spectacular. I mean, she does not get involved in anything other than playing tennis. I mean, she does commercials and a few things, but... 
she has really made herself a tennis player first, and uh, I guarantee you, you know, she's a young girl, she'll mature into a much, much better player and will be one of the greatest players of all time. Size up the top Americans uh, in the women's dry up. Lindsay Davenport and the uh, two Williams sisters, uh, how, what will they need to do to fare well in this event? Well, it's a really interesting the way the draw played out. In the second quarter, at the bottom of that quarter, you have Venus playing Serena. So, you know, they're going to play each other way earlier in the draw than they would have would ever normally play each other. Um, and then after they play each other, they got to play Kleisters in that quarter. So it's going to be very challenging for them. I think uh, in Lindsay's at the very bottom of the draw, and she's probably got a little easier road to get through. She plays Lee first round, and, uh, you know, this is her church. You know, she's a clean ball striker, probably the greatest we've ever had and this is a good surface for her to do well. And a former champ as well. Uh, the Russians are front and center, the Americans are front and center. Uh, what about the two Belgian stars? Where do they fit into the mix at the Open? Uh, Kleisters, again, is in that second quarter where she's got to tackle the winner of Venus and Serena. So that's a, that's a very tough quarter final. And then uh, Hennen has got Moresmo and Pierce in her quarter. Uh, Pierce is extremely dangerous uh, on this surface and at the U.S. Open. All right, we're putting you on the spot. We need a winner for the men and for the women. Uh, Steve, what do you have? Um, you know, I'm I'm crossing my fingers. We get a we get an Andre or an Andy. Um, it is certainly good shot that Roger Federer can do it. Now, on the women's side, I, I probably would have picked Kleisters, but it would be a very very close race. And then when the draw came out, and having Venus and Serena in her quarter. It makes it tougher, but I'd probably still give the nod to her just on her ball striking and how healthy and fit she is right now. All right, we're putting you on the spot. So you picked Kleisters, then I wasn't sure who you picked on the men's side. I'll, I'll probably go Federer, but, you know, 50% chance Federer, and then a 50% chance is one of the other those other top players. All right, we'll wait and see if anyone can unsee the uh, champ in Roger Federer. Steve Bellamy, uh, president and founder of the Tennis Channel, we appreciate your time and enjoy the U.S. Open. Good, thanks for covering it.